join. Either one. <laughs> oh, good. Okay. We're on. Wonderful. I hear a pinging. Is that you? Or? No? Okay. Something's talking. No, it's okay. It's this. You're hearing yourself. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Okay. Anyway, uh, I'm Seth. Welcome to another one of our incense discussions here at Woodstock Trading Company. Uh, let's get the nuts and bolts out. Off. We are Woodstock Trading Company. Our address is 1880 Route 70 East. There should be an E there. That's cool. In Cherry Hill, New Jersey, 08003. Should be coming through good on sound. And, uh, uh, make sure you like us on Facebook. Look us up on Facebook. Uh, we're always posting information about new events. Uh, sometimes we get kind of uh, like a little low. We have a little downtime. We just feel like communicating and posting stuff. Or we find something or rediscover something that we forgot about and said, hey, you know, more people should know about this. So check us out on Facebook also. It's a good thing. Facebook when properly used. Yeah. Like any, like any tool. <laughs> You know, like any technology, like a hammer, can create, it can destroy, so... Fire. Uh, they can like us at Woodstock Trading Company. Easy right. to find. Yeah, which I did, exactly. But we named it that so that we would remember also, you know, because this is Woodstock Trading Company. So anyway, welcome to one of our next of our little incense discussions. This is now easily our fifth. We don't count. <laughs> uh, once, once we got past three or four, we just kind of... The first one was a whole discussion on incense types and things like that. Uh, we, the, oh, the first and second one were both incense types. Then we took off uh, looking at our inventory and the things that we have. Uh, I don't even know how many incense varieties we have. I would guess, well, I'll just say a few hundred. Just easy to say that. I know it's a cop out, but in fact, one of the ones we're going to mention, I, I, I have vowed. Uh, it's called Amber 707, and I vow that when we reach 707 fragrances, I'm going to change its number in our little catalog to actually 707. What is, number is it now? Oh, Amber 707 right now is number 20, I believe, right? It should be on that. 20. It's one we've been carrying for a long, long time. We'll get to that. Uh, that's okay. <laughs> so, uh, we're going to begin. Th this one was a real challenge. This series was really fun, and I, I enjoy the challenge. The last few have been kind of easy, and not that I haven't enjoyed that. Um, this was a challenge. Um, before we get going, I just wanted to show off one of our little projects. Uh, I don't know whether they're going to show off, but we turn these ceramic incense burners that it kind of became a point of necessity that we really needed something that we can put these incenses in that would catch all the ashes, you know, were safe, clean, all that kind of jazz. And it took us a while, and I was sort of inspired by some of the Japanese joss-stick incense burners, but they were also very, very small, fairly light, and for their size and everything, it seemed a little bit expensive. So we, it, it, through the process of mistakes and modifications, it, it evolved into these, and every time we made a new batch of these, we discovered a new issue would come up that we had to solve, and we're not ceramicists professionally, so we just sort of had to figure it out, and we managed to, uh, at least for now, perfect the process, and um, so... Each one of these have been turned on the wheel, and hand glazed, and they're basically one of a kind. Yeah. Uh, so they're not. They're slowly putting them online uh, like at our one. web at our website, and we have been giving them a number. If there's something you see or like, we can even shoot you a personal photograph. If you contact us through WTC at WoodstockTradeCo.com. The the problem we are having is many incense burners are okay for. Indian incenses that have these bamboo cores in them, but they can't handle Tibetan incenses that don't have a bamboo core, uh, like they're made of wood, you know, or Tibetan incenses tend to be very thick, relatively thick, compared to Indian or Japanese incenses. 
So the hole was too small, so you couldn't fit it in. So we made the holes nice and large so you can fit in Tibetan incenses. Then the problem we were having is once they burned down, we were having trouble getting the gunk out. So now we make sure that we pierce the hole so that you can knock out the stuff from behind. Um, since the holes are a little large, some thinner sticks might kind of lean a little, which is more of an aesthetic problem, but for some longer sticks, it might extend beyond the perimeter of the bowl. So, this is how I solve that. I fold a little end over on itself. Like, I don't know if it can be seen, sort of like a little hockey stick, like so. So I fold it over, so it's doubled, shove it in the hole, and it stays nice and straight. So again, this is part of the evolution process in how we create things, but also how they're used. So that's taking care of that problem. So the, the Japanese incenses, since we make a hole, the hole we make with a little cone-shaped piercer, they tend to stand up pretty straight. So in fact, the first thing we're going to show is a Japanese incense, which I've lit here. Uh, this is number 21, item number 21. Nokiba, moss garden. For many years, I couldn't get it in these little into in rolls. They were in these, used to come in these little boxes. Uh, it was something of an anomaly. This is from the Shoido Corporation, uh, which it was. Uh, I had a fun conversation with a fellow from another Japanese incense company. All these Japanese incense companies have, from what I've experienced as an as an outsider, a kind of a friendly rivalry. I don't know how friendly it really is, but from my experience, it's been a kind of a friendly rivalry. And the sense of humor, you know, and how they kind of jab at each other is sort of amusing. And I was speaking to one company, one of the fellows there, and this company, they have a fragrance that actually has been around for almost a thousand years. And they were like, oh, Shoido Corporation, you know, we really like them, wonderful people, Chairman Hata. Um, this is, but you know, they're so new, um, they show, they're exciting, and but sometimes they show lack of restraint or, you know, control. It's like, but they're producing beautiful fragrances and the time will come. We feel that they'll really, they'll find their voice. And I'm like, wow, okay, how long have they been around? And he said it was something like 300 something years. But, oh, yeah, 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 they don't, is that all? They, they couldn't possibly know anything and just... 300 something years, I think it's like 12, 13 generations, you can look it up online. So, Moss Garden, um, this is one of the first things I carried from them. Japanese incenses tend to be much, much lighter than Indian incenses as a rule. There are always exceptions to every rule. And sandalwood, of course, is the core of this fragrance. Very, very light, very gentle. Um, it has a cool kind of loamy, earthy quality. There's some patchouli in here. This, there is little doubt, which is probably what's giving it that kind of leafy, earthy, loamy quality. And here, oh, we'll pass this around. Why should I hog this? So here we are. We're going to start moving to the left, of course, right? Pass to the left. So, I mean, generally, if you like one Japanese incense, you'll tend to like most of them, but not all of them, of course. Um, and, I mean, as far as strength is concerned, to give you an idea how light most Japanese incenses are, on a 1 to 10 scale, I mean, this is probably a solid 5. And it's so very gentle. You compare this to an Indian incense, this, on a 1 to 10, in terms of strength, would be a 1. Ooh. Um, but they're very sophisticated and introverted fragrances. Uh, one of the terms you'll hear is <clears throat> listening to a fragrance. Japanese incenses lend themselves very wonderfully to active perception of, its, of the fragrance. You can enjoy them passively, like while you're reading or studying, uh, which is a sure benefit, but they also lend themselves to thought 
and study. You can enjoy having Dark Side of the Moon on and not really even notice it beginning or ending, and you'll enjoy it. But you can actually sit in a dimly lit room and really, really dive into the, the, the soundscape of it. Uh, Japanese incenses lend themselves very much to that. Um, so the term listening to a fragrance, the reason that term exists, uh, English doesn't really have a word for actively smelling things. It's, you know, we can hear things and we can really listen to them. We can study things, which is active for looking at something. Um, so taste and and smell, we really don't value, I guess, as much out in the Western culture than it is out in the Eastern culture. So we really don't have a, a good word, olfaction, I don't know what we would use. So the, the translation ultimately comes down to listening to a fragrance. So what we're going to do is now we're going to start going down the rabbit hole. <laughs> okay, so those that like something like Nokiba would also likely enjoy. Think about these Japanese incenses also. Getting the first one out of these bundles can be such difficulty that that's the hardest part. Once you get one, you're good. Ah, okay. <clears throat> I don't speak Japanese, so the names I'm given for these, I have to sort of take for granted that they're true. Uh, this is Rangetsu, which I have for many years pronounced Rangetsu, but it's Rangetsu. Uh, let's get you the number on that one. That's number 52, number 52. From what I was told, it refers to the moon, Rangetsu. I don't know if anybody you speak any Japanese. <laughs> I guess I, I should have looked uh, R A N G E T S U. Should be number. Is it 52? Should be 52. I'm not seeing it on the list. Yeah, that might be an old list. R A N G E T S U. Unless I miswrote. R A N G E T S U. And it's number. I believe it's 52. We'll get, you know, maybe we should get somebody to run and check our website. Well, here. We'll do that before we're done. Anyway, first to the moon. Some of these names are very poetic because from those people who are on the moon, very few uh, claim that the moon sort of, the particles on the moon smell kind of like ash. Because it's pretty much what it is. mineral. But anyway, it's more of a poetic title. So this is how it was explained to me. Uh, this is a very elusive fragrance. There are times that when you're taking in the fragrance that you smell relatively little. You smell something like rosewood, which ironically does not smell like rose. Um, kind of a slightly resinous, smoky quality. Uh, not sandalwood smoky. Um, and you smell relatively little. And then there are other times that you'll take a breath and you'll catch a smell of something like green tea or oolong tea, like a green oolong tea, jade oolong. And then next time you take in a breath, you might smell maybe a rose petal. Sometimes something lightly fruity, almost like raisin. And then in your next breath, you smell again nothing. So it comes and goes. It waxes and wanes, this fragrance or it's been described like walking at night. There are times that the moon is shining bright and you can see your way. Then there are times where the moon ducks behind clouds and you're left in the dark. Mm. It's pretty deep. Uh, I'm very, very impressed with this. So let's pass this and you'll see what I'm talking about. Um, highly elusive fragrance. Um, it gives you a thirst. It's a fragrance that gives you a thirst for more of it. Yet I have found that when I've lit multiple sticks, it, it didn't seem to matter much. Pretty much that is as strong as it's ever going to be. When you light multiple sticks, it ultimately will confuse you, and you won't get much more than the smoke. 
It's a really baffling fragrance, really wonderful. And the more of it you take, the more you want. From breath to breath, it changes. Mm. Yeah. It's really one of the strangest fragrances that way. And it's, it's very lyrical, it's very pretty. Um, I used to get this um, the same company. They make one of the real, like, they make some amazing, very high end fragrances. This one's relatively inexpensive. I mean, it's only a few bucks. For a bundle, like one of these bundles, I should know that really how much it costs. Um, comes in long sticks and short sticks. I generally get the long sticks, you know, but you because I figured you can take the long sticks and make them short. It's really hard to make the short sticks long. You have to really have a gift for stretching. Also, uh, we're going to show off at least one more of these Japanese incenses. A Senko. I've been carrying this for years and years. Uh, this is number. I should have written it down. I think I did. Oh, I might not have written down a Senko. It's uh, E I S. We'll get that for you. E Senko is number. 179. 179. Thank you, Magic Voice. <laughs> magic Voice chiming in. Magic voice. Oh, wonderful. Also, rosewood based fragrance. It's a little bit smokier. It's very similar to uh, a fragrance I used to be able you know, to get called Daibutsuko. I have this frustrating tendency, you'll see me to mention incenses I can't get anymore. Part of the business is heartbreak. And you fall in love with certain fragrances, and then they disappear. Uh, I'll get into that with one other very shortly. This one has a really noticeable resinous note. Uh, probably frankincense mm. or something like it. Mm -hmm. Also very cooling passes. Also very cooling green cooling. This is a good one for at night if you're overtired, as well as Rangetsu. If you're a little bit overtired, wound up, overheated, uh, and you're just trying to get to sleep. Uh, Esenko, Nokiba, uh, Rangetsu, all these are really good fragrances for the overstimulated state where you just, the mind's chattering away, and you feel heat inside and you want to fall asleep. It's sort of a hypnotic as such. Let me pass this. Here we go. Reach out your hand. <laughs> yeah. So you'll notice something a bit sharper with this. Um, still not strong. Something akin to frankincense, something almost resinous, lemony, bergamot, that sort of Earl Grey I, I use the term Earl Grey because people know Earl Grey. Huh. They might not know bergamot. That's Earl, Earl Grey tea is bergamot. That's what makes Earl Grey tea. It's it's a citrus. It's a funky citrus fruit. Really strange looking. You have to be careful with the oil of bergamot. Uh, if it's the real thing, if it's pure, there's a material in it that's phototoxic. Uh, limes also lime, oil. If you get it on you, it's fine. It might be a little irritating, but when you're out in the sun, it makes that oil very, very nasty. You get a very violent, you can get a very violent skin reaction, blisters. It's like a burn. It can be like a secondary burn. It's very, very unpleasant. Uh, some company, they found the material in it called bergaptine, and they were able to remove that. So sometimes you can get bergaptine-free bergamot. But much like caffeine-free coffee, it seems like it's missing something. So I uh, just want you to know that. Um, you know what? We're going to move on because I, I have other things I wanted to show you, so we're never going to get anywhere. Japanese incense is going to be very light, gentle. Uh, moss Garden. Uh, oh, I never told you. It's called Moss Garden. If I didn't mention it, I did. Um, let me see. It's one of our most popular Japanese fragrances. Not, you know, 
with a very small number of people. It's 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 selective popularity. But those people that like it love it, and they come in and they'll buy like two or three packs at a time. Unfortunately, it doesn't come in larger packs. Most Japanese incenses tend to come in one size. Um, so we're going to mention next. Most garden is a Cinco. Uh, no Kiva. That's what we meant. That was the first. Yeah, that was where we began. Yeah. No Kiva and Most garden. Yeah, they're the same. No Kiva. I don't know what Nokiva literally translates to. It could literally translate to Moss Garden. I don't know. If there's anybody who speaks Japanese out there online, uh, you know, send us a little message or whatever. Uh, tell us if, you know. Uh, the next one, Green Patchouli. A bit of a misnomer. Not the green part. Just the sticks are green. Um... It doesn't smell much like patchouli. I don't it's know. Number twenty-two. Number twenty-two. Yeah, we started twenty-one, then we went to twenty-two. Didn't mention that. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful fragrance. Uh, very clean, minty. Um, fresh. It's lightly sweet, lightly vanilla, toffee. Um, go into that whole why and wherefore. Um, this manufacturer, the people that make this, I suspect are the same people that make that made and still make Primo incenses. The Primo incense. Uh, easily recognizable Primo incenses. They come in these triangular tubes. Very strange packaging. Very, very effective and efficient because they bundle up real perfectly into these hexagonal bundles. Um, their fragrances have a distinctive thumbprint. And everything from that everything at Primo sells, when you smell one of their things, you you'll be able to identify anything. So that's something that Primo has. Dr. Seth. Yes, sweetie. If people want a sample Yeah, oh samples. Of any of these fragrances they have to just send us an envelope with two stamps inside to Woodstock Trading Company, 1880 Route 70. Tell us which one you like, and we will send it to you. Make sure to have your return address on the envelope where we can ship you what you want. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we're into that. Because uh, we can't put the fragrance through. Yeah. The modem. I mean, I mean, I know modems are not like. I mean, we had the dial-up modems and everything, and they're much better than than they were then, the fourteen four and all that, and or even before that, the old war games modem. But still, we have not found a way to actually send the molecules. You know. Yes. Doctor Seth. Speaking. Someone just sent something through the internet. Was asking the cost of the green patchouli because they're interested. Yeah. Uh, these are two dollar packs. Um, I believe it's what twenty grams. Twenty yeah. grams. So um, twenty grams to give you an idea for those who didn't grow up during the Carter era. <laughs> um, twenty eight grams is an ounce. So it's shy of an ounce. You know, it's about eight sticks shy of an ounce. Um, and I also have larger packs. I do fifty five gram packs, which would be about two ounces. Uh, and those are five dollars. Thank you. And beyond that, I just can't fit any more in the packet. But yeah, if you want a larger quantity, just give me a call. You know, and if we don't have it, you know, we can order it. It comes in half kilo boxes. That they're always slightly squishy and damp, which is interesting, no matter what. And the sticks themselves are quite dry, but the boxes are something in it that's hygroscopic and it seems to always be slightly squishy and damp. It's a fascinating business. It really is. I got to tell you. I mean, well, not Champa always is squishy and dead. And I don't know. Sometimes you get an odd batch, which was like one time. I don't know what they were thinking, but it must have been dipped in methyl salicylate, uh, wintergreen oil. I don't know if it was a mistake, but it was wet and it was full of wintergreen oil. So when you touched it, I guess I should address this, right? When 
when you touched it, your fingers went numb, you know, and basically would burn your fingertips, and and it was just it was it was horrible, really, and and actually toxic, you know. Scent of all that. Yeah, wintergreen oil is quite toxic. Yeah. Careful. Before we send stuff. any any incenses out, they are always tested here, yeah. checked here in the store. We are the lab animals. And uh, Dr. Seth is quite the expert on what should or should not be shipped or sold to our customers. Thank you. Uh, so green patchouli, uh, despite its name, doesn't smell much like patchouli. <laughs> But it's a beautiful, light, toffee. I'll pass it around. I'm sorry. Uh, also, a, kind of a green, slightly mossy, loamy quality, but not in the way that patchouli is. You know, patchouli has that sort of earth, loam quality, you know, like mm -hmm. leaves and things like that. Patchouli, I should mention, of course, as everyone knows, the love hate kind of thing, where there really is little middle ground. Um, uh, once now, once you've smelled something like this, I'll show you other things that I believe are either made by the same manufacturer, and if they're made by different manufacturers, they're definitely something that Primo carries. Um, again, you get that vanilla, mint, toffee quality that when you try something else, for example, this one here, Precious Sandal. Uh, that is, I'll get the number for you, number 157. Oh, no, it's not 157. What is Precious Sandal? Magic Voice. I wrote down, I wrote down Superb Sandal. I just grabbed the wrong bundle. <laughs> you have to be careful. These bundles, as you can see, are so carefully labeled. Uh, Precious Sandal is number 58. 58, okay, good. Um, oh, I wrote it down, okay. Uh, I mentioned Superb Sandal also. It's nearly identical to this, but a little bit sweeter, a little bit, a little bit less smoky. This, I guarantee, is the second tier of Primo Sandalwood. <clears throat> this is, I think it's their Connoisseur line it's called, I believe. It's like a saffron colored mm. wrapper. It's delicious. And it's sort of popcorn, basmati rice, toffee, butterscotch, marshmallow. Mm. Oh. I, it's it's actually one that came up on a previous uh, discussion, I think. Is this one of the ones yeah. that you were saying mixes well with a few drops of the chili oil? It's a nice one, actually. If uh, One of the frustrating things, I think I wrote about this on Facebook, is a really convincing, complex, balanced patchouli incense. Um, I have some patchouli incense that are really nice, I really enjoy. But uh, I wanted a sweeter component to balance the earthy, kind of bitter quality of patchouli. So what I'll do is I, I'll get pure patchouli oil and I'll apply it directly onto the stick. Um, not much. You have to be really careful. One, you don't need much. I'll also put it in intervals rather than the whole stick. So you get a little hit of patchouli, then it'll disappear, and it'll come back. This way you never get completely used to it. So you, it, you don't get jaded by it, and it's not so strong. Um, I do it to champa incenses. Sairan Johnny Champa is one that I do. Um, this one here is not quite as sweet as a champa. But I'll apply it to this fragrance or superb sandal. Um, I do that with a few other oils. Clove. I used to have a really good clove incense. I really liked, and it disappeared. I couldn't get it again, and so I applied clove oil. It's a lot better than you think, because <laughs> people have this image of what clove oil is going to smell, and people my generation or older think of dentist offices. You've been using some of our. House patchouli. I yeah. don't even think it's online yet. Um, it, if they need something that's really a wonderful we scored. Yeah. patchouli, they need to call you or email you. We scored. Uh, patchouli oil is one of the few essential oils that over time gets better. It seems to age. It seems to improve. As long as you store it properly. Uh, if it's kept out of the light and given time, it, it, it seems to mature. And we have a
about a kilo-ish, you know, or more, a little bit more, of patchouli oil that's about 20 years old now. Wow. Yeah, wow, I know. And uh, it's absolutely amazing. Uh, a little bit goes a very, very, very long way. I'm putting in these little roll-on uh, bottles. That was the hardest part to find with these little roll-on bottles. Um, they're, I believe it's $22, pretty sure that's right, if you want to call us, $22. It's a third ounce, which is, you know, because now a half, half ounce of, of a pure patchouli oil now is at least $20 to $24, so that's new. Um, the key with the direct application method, you need to use a pure essential oil. All right. Um, it's not hard to find pure clove oil, but many patchouli oils, most people don't put clove oil on their bodies to fragrance themselves, unless they're trying to attract a dentist. Uh, but patchouli is not that uncommon, so many patchouli oils that people wear are cut. And what they're cut with, I don't know. So if you put it on an incense stick, it could, I don't know how it's going to smell and it burns. can't guarantee. If it's a mineral oil, if it's a vegetable oil, I have no idea. Uh, so if you're going to apply it directly, then you need to use a pure oil. Another reason why you don't need to apply very much. Clove oil, just to give you an idea what it's going to smell like, and this will really surprise you. It will remind you of juicy fruit gum. There's a surprising clove component that most people are really kind of unaware of, but it's there. I mean, you can get the Adam's clove gum, but that's obvious. This is a little bit more subtle. It's much better than I expected. Anise oil. It's very, very good. Um, star anise, if you can get it. I'm going to try and get some for the store. Um, some things didn't work as well as I expected, like lavender oil. Mm. As much as I love, it seemed to not respond well to the heat. It seemed to degrade the fragrance. Any mint was not good. Citrus does not work also. <laughs> um, bay works fairly well. Um, allspice works very well, uh, direct application. If you can afford sandalwood oil, you know, Rio Pure sandalwood oil, then do that. It's a, sh it's a shame to burn, um, but if you can, it's, it's gorgeous. Um, so anyway, yeah, 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 that, so that's that little spiel. Um, also, I think you might want to mention that your pure patchouli is not to be put directly on the skin. Yeah, I'd recommend to avoid that. Um, it, it's, it is a pure patchouli. Um, it can, in some people, cause hypersensitivity reactions, um, sometimes pretty bad ones. So, I mean, if you've worn pure patchouli and you don't get a reaction, I can't guarantee with this one that you won't. Um, like any agricultural product, every batch is different. So, so this is a sister to green patchouli. This, I suspect, was Primo's e Egyptian patchouli, which was there, it, and I believe it might still be. Um, it's a, they, it's considered a step up from green patchouli. That's tr that's putting an objective grade on something that's really very subjective. It's a bit lighter. Um, doesn't quite have as much of the smoky component. What is the name? This is called Egyptian. I didn't mention it. It's simply called Egyptian. There's another reason why I suspect. Same as the Egyptian patchouli. And you notice the similarity between it. It's number 107. Thank you. Oh, 107. Excellent. Um, the precious sandalwood. It's again that sort of toffee, vanilla, mint quality. It runs through all of these that once you smell one of their things, like Crystal Rose is another one. If I can see. I think, yeah, number 13, Crystal Rose. I'll show you that. And that's a floral. And yet, it's a very unusual floral. It's kind of musky. It's not an over-the-top rose rose. It's, it's a deeper, darker, moodier, more interesting or complicated rose. Many people don't care for rose incenses because they're used to an over-the-top headache-causing 
is a common complaint with florals. Rose, the thrust of this fragrance is more amber musk qualities, and the rose is used to kind of flavor it. Hmm. Some some batches will even have rose crystal even right on the surface. You'll see these little sparkly bits. That's why I guess it, it's called crystal. So you can tell it's probably the same manufacturer. I, I would guess. I could be wrong. But you can. there's a certain profile that they all share. Right? It's sort of like some... It's like a house flavor. It's like certain vineyards, there's a distinctive... Like they have a yeast or, or something <laughs> or a mold or whatever that is distinctive to their vineyard. Same thing's true in breweries, particularly in mm. Belgium. I'd love to have something like that for company at Thanksgiving. It's yeah. just such a warm, homey... Ah, I'm glad you said that. Warm, homey fragrance. I'm glad you said that, because that brings up the next fragrance. Um, people that like green patchouli often like also Casturi Chandan. Casturi is with a K, Casturi. It doesn't contain real Casturi. Real Casturi is... There are these... Like, it's a secretion of some kind of, of a rodent-like creature. Uh, these little pods that they produce, these little musky pods. And it used to be a very common ingredient in perfumery as well as confection. It's a flavor. It's kind of a vanilla-like quality. I don't know what made a person think to try to put, you know, like beaver anal gland extract in their cake, right? I don't, I don't know where or how that, why anybody would think to try that, or why anybody would think to pick it up and smell it. But when they did, I'm sure they were surprised. Um, so Casturi Chandan, Chandan refers to sandalwood. Let me give you the number. I'm sorry. Casturi uh, Chandan is number 38. This is one of the classics. If you like. Sandalwood incenses, or even Indian incenses, for that matter. This is one of this is kind of one of the Sgt. Pepper's and Dark Side of the Moon's again, and album. You know, that kind of, this is one you need to have in your collection. Uh, again, aniseed, cardamom pods, sandalwood. Mm. Uh, it's definitely not from the same. The reason I mentioned I'm bringing this one up is in contrast to the other ones I showed you, because this is clearly a different manufacturer. See, now you can tell how it's a bit of an outsider from those others and why those others are all related. Mm. Aniseed is very, uh, it's very hospitable fragrance. That's why I'm glad you mentioned that. Um, Absolutely. It's very welcoming. It's a, many incenses, particularly some florals, especially some people don't like during dinner time or around mealtime. Um, whereas mm. this tends, has more of a slightly sweet, um, vanilla anise, you know, kind of like the Italian bakery. Yeah. Somebody's making pizzel, yeah. right? Some people describe this as something like pizzel, but it's yeah, it is. Um, it, it unlike Ranghetsu, which kind of gave you a thirst for a fragrance, this sort of gives you more of a hunger <laughs> for a fragrance. That's not unusual, really. Um, that happens quite often, particularly in these vanilla kind of fragrances. Um, so it's got a little spice to it. It's really, really nice and very, very gentle. Excellent, excellent for company. In fact, you can burn that for people who claim they don't particularly care for incenses uh, or may find themselves kind of kind of choky. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. We just got another call from oh, Seattle, Seattle. And they're asking when your next incense lecture is going to be. Because uh, we are coming into Thanksgiving, mentioning Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Um, with that fragrance, uh, I think we've scheduled for the 21st of November. It's the week before Thanksgiving from 5.30 to 6.30. Same time. Same and we, we stream live, but they can always catch it through our YouTube, or sure. you can connect through our website. If you miss it, yeah, go on YouTube. And um, again, if you want samples. Yeah, samples. Uh, may as well mention that again, samples. Uh, any of these things that we mention, or even an ins you know, if uh, send us an envelope. What is it? Two stamps. Two stamps. Two stamps. 
uh, return address and which one you're interested in, or you know, or if you just want to say, hey, send me something interesting <laughs> as a sample, I guess. Oh, what the heck? I'll do it. Right. Surprise me. Um, so let me give you the address, right? It's Woodstock Trading Company, 1880, Route 70 East, Cherry Hill, New Jersey, 08003. Um, so the next one, this, this one was a really, I was talking about heartbreak. This is a good example. Um, it's simply called Saffron. You know, I'll pass around the unlit stick. Uh, it's one that took me by surprise. I have a, there are a few incenses I have that the unlit sticks. One of the complaints I hear from people about many incenses is they love the smell of the unburned stick, but when they light it, they don't like it. And the, the cause and the reason behind many that often saffron number twenty three. Number twenty three. Yeah, we're going in right. Yeah. So this is the third. Yeah. So um, the problem with that usually is because the fragrance that they're smelling is an oil or perfume or something like that, and the core incense is kind of a wood pulp, and they're dipped into, use the wrong hand, dipped into uh, these oils, and when they burn, you're getting a lot of that wood pulp burning smell, and the, the oils that they're using also might not be very heat stable. And they're being degraded by the heat. See, what you want to smell is not the oil burning. You want to smell the oil being volatilized by heat. That's really what you want. Um, I have a few incenses that are the opposite, <clears throat> which is strange. Um, and they tend to be eccentric incenses. This is one of them. The unlit sticks, I'll pass that around actually, the unlit sticks might be a little bit disagreeable smelling. Very sharp. Sure. It's very sharp. Very sharp. Sure. Um, very astringent, very sharp, um, mm -hmm. very uh, camphorous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, it's a term kind of manure -y. Yeah, try again. <laughs> um, or, I, I, I mean, I'm going to be really graphic, but sometimes if you pick your teeth, you know, you'll, you'll get a uh, some little funky going on there. We just um, plain garlic. Or if you haven't flossed in a while, right? You know, mm -hmm. I know. And you'll get something odd. The unlit sticks, these are kind of sharp and a little bit disagreeable to most noses. Mm -hmm. uh, I would, I, I, which turned me off to wanting to try it and light it, but I figured, well, I have it. I may as well, I may as well light it. I have nothing to lose, I suppose. If I don't like it, I can put it out. Uh, but once you light it, it completely changes, and it's very soft and very gentle. Um, sandalwood, slightly sweet, a safflower, saffron quality about it. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And I don't know who manufactures it, but it's reminiscent of some other things I'm going to show you from a company called Schroff, and they make very gentle, very light fragrances. This is in the category of incenses. Let me hand that off. That you'll hear the term kasari, it refers to saffron. Oh, it's delicious. It's not like the pie of saffron, mm. which <laughs> took me a while to learn to like. You know, the, 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 that sort of classic Spanish saffron, which at mm. first I was a little startled by, but it's it's it smells very old, slightly musty and old, like an old piano mm. <laughs> or old books. That's the one thing that I'll hear over and over again. It with Kasari incenses, they remind them of old books, or if you've gone to a used record store or a used bookstore, um, they have a certain earthy, musty quality about them. And these Kasari incenses, they all share that, which brings up heartache. One of my absolute favorites, Padma Kasari, if there's anybody out there that can find it, P A D M A. I used to sell this to. Apparently, I had no idea, but transcendental meditators are so in love with Kasari incenses, particularly Padma. I got them hooked on this now. Um, I had no idea about this, and we were we had it, and we were carrying it, and some fellow comes in the store, very, very pleased to find it. And then during the course of the next three, four weeks that followed that, 
I went through about three dozen packets of the stuff, which normally didn't sell that quickly because it's such an eccentric fragrance. It's slightly, again, damp and earthy. Um, and it didn't appeal to most people's noses, but it's a gore I love it. And all of a sudden, I went through like three dozen of these, and then I found out that apparently the Transcendental Meditation uh, community all around us found out that we, that we had this stuff. And it's, a, it's a very tight community. Everybody seems to know everybody. Um, and I guess if they don't, they can always astral project to each other's places and you know play cards or whatever they do. And so I was amazed by it. And so, so instead of ordering like a dozen here, a dozen there, I was ordering them by the gross. And people were they're tiny little packs. We were buying like six, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them at a time, or whole bundles of a dozen. Um, but of course, heartbreak. All of a sudden, I just couldn't get it in anymore. It just completely disappeared. And oh well. Uh, but we're not dead in the water. Because we have things, for example, we have Casari Deluxe. A -d -d -d. Let's see, I have that here. Ooh, I'm going to take a packet of Casari Deluxe. I think I did. I mention it. Here it is. Casari Deluxe. Um, the name Deluxe doesn't mean it's that it's better. It's just kind of a, something that they'll attach to some of their intense names. Uh, this is number 36. Yeah, and they're two dollars for twenty-five grams. Five dollars for sixty-five grams. This is twenty-five grams. It's quite a bit. It's not expensive. Most of the Kasari incenses tend to not be very expensive, which is ironic because saffron is so very expensive. So I guess it's a different kind of saffron they're using. Or a different color. Maybe they're using the petals, yeah. perhaps you know, or, or safflower, mm -hmm. something like safflower, maybe. Dusky. Or yeah, it's yeah. more vanilla. It's a little more vanilla. It's a little lighter, um, and it still has that sort of old books, earthy quality. I mean, if you like very musty, earthy smells, I have one mm -hmm. called Hina. I might have mentioned before in a previous seminar. I mean, that smells like basement. <laughs> um, reminiscent of a type of tea from, I believe, Yunnan province, <clears throat> called. Pu'er, sometimes called Paul Lee. Um, I've even heard it called Pony, uh, but Paul Lee or Pu'er tea, and they often come in these compressed cakes, and they're like black compressed cakes, and um, and it ages. It actually is one of the few teas that gets better with age. And there are even people that collect bricks of Pu'er, and they have Pu'er cellars much like wine cellars, and they even study vintage. Um, yeah, Hina, if you like a very musty, I didn't bring a sample of that with me. Um, it's kind of hampery. Some people, like people that don't like it, they describe it as hampery, um, sake, whatever you want to call it, you know. I, I, think, I don't know where they're getting that, but okay. Um, it's really an interest now that uh, more and more tea houses are, pro are coming up and people are starting to enjoy the variety and uh, extent that that tea actually is. It's uh, it's just been a tremendous phenomenon. In fact, I think Starbucks is getting into the right. tea game at this point. So it's going to be very interesting that people are going to start to learn about different teas and the different uh, kinds of things that are available for people. I have to find is when you get bundles. There's something wonderful about these. They're so primitive. I've always loved these, you know, primitive, you know, unceremonious packaging. That's it. This Handmade. Is, this, yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Every now and then you'll even find a long, black, thick hair huh. every once in a while in one of these. Now, it worries some. Some incenses have more hair than others. <laughs> And I don't know if it's something in there that, while they're making it's causing their hair to fall out. I don't know. Also, there are some incenses that, and I was curious because every once in a while I'll find one turn backward. It'll be flipped the wrong way. And I thought maybe that was a mistake or whatever. And so I was just curious. And I, I had a theory, and, and I started counting them. And I found that 
approximately, and it seemed to average out to 108, hmm. that one out of every 108 sticks. So they were doing their mantra. They were doing mantra. Yeah, oh. they were, they were, you know, doing and the mantra. while they were rolling the sticks, doing the mantra. Like, it, and it's by hand, you know, it's a hand, these are handmade things. And you can see on some sticks thicker parts and narrower parts. Some of them you can even see fingerprints. You know, some of the doughier incenses, some of the durbar incenses. And that's one of the reasons why we don't count sticks, but we give you a weight. Yeah, we go by weight um, with almost every incense. There are only a few exceptions. Um, but if they're packaged by count, then we sell them by count. Um, like the Balaji things and stuff like that. So. What's the name? This is, uh, let me get the name right, uh, it should be Sital, number 66. Spell it? Uh, S-I-T-A-L. Sital is more of a, I believe, the company name. And they made one fragrance called Sital Flora many years ago, which later was I was able to get under the name Paradise Flower, and then simply Flower, which similar to this, and it was a beautiful, bright camphorous, camphor patchouli. I can't get it anymore. More heartbreak. This is similar. A little lighter. Very, very similar, if not identical, to the Lakshmi Chandan. Oh, 10 minutes. Oh, good. Okay. Which is another fragrance I can't get anymore. So this is a good substitute. Very cool. Slightly damp. It reminds me, there was a hotel we used to go to when we visit. When we stayed in Miami. I don't, I won't mention. I don't have to mention the name, but that's okay. And their basement floor, they always had the air conditioning running, <clears throat> and it was like about 100 feet from the ocean. So everything in there was always damp. They had a nice skating room too. And it was an interesting smell, and it reminds me so much of this. Our smell, our fragrance. You know, we smell. Um, our brains are really hardwired to uh, trigger memory, our limbic system, all that jazz. I can go into the neuroanatomy, but we're not here for that. Maybe we'll do electron neuroanatomy, but not today. Uh, but anyway, um, paleologically, you know, our sense of smell being so old, the ability to detect particles dissolved or suspended in the medium in which you live and respond. I mean, that's smell, basically. That's what we're doing. Most senses do not involve um, the actual molecules, taste and smell, pretty much. Otherwise, we're responding on light waves, sound waves, things like that. I mean, we're actually taking the molecules into our bodies um, and responding to them. And there are parts of our brain that receive olfactory input that we're not aware of, and they cause physiologic reactions, hmm? like when you're hungry, you smell something cooking, you salivate, your GI tract gets moving. Um, pretty primitive stuff, stuff that we're not in control of. Um, it's part of that, the cephalic phase of digestion, as it's called. But there are people who have had bad breakups, and for example, and that other person wore a fragrance. And every time they smell it, they can't stand it anymore. Bergamot, I mentioned bergamot. Mm -hmm. I, when I was in an anatomy lab, uh, as you would imagine, you need something. Or in another part of my life, when we were doing post-mortem examinations, you'll never get used to that smell because every one is different. And so I used to take bergamot oil, and I put it on the brim of a cap I was wearing. And I, so now when I smell bergamot, I associate it with anatomy lab. And or postmortem, and that's kind of what I. So it's unfortunate. It has, you know, I'm able to make the separation. I've I've trained myself to make that. Uh, so Cital is very bright, camphorous. Remember we mentioned that camphorous quality. Um, it's not smoky. You know, it's not too dry. It does have a sweetish component. That's that sort of cool saffron, similar. You notice how these are all similar. Mm -hmm. That's why we're bundling these together into, um, so if you like um, saffron, the first one we showed, you'll probably like most or all of these. Um, that's kind of what we're approaching. Mandala, I'll show this last one in this group. Mandala 
This was first brought in uh, many years ago. The Excelsior Incense Company. I'll give a shout out to Mr. David Barr. I have to. Uh, he's the guy that he's the guy that brought really started this country and into incenses and enjoying incenses. Uh, he started Excelsior Incense and. He's like one of the first guys, one of the first guy to bring Nakchampa that we know, Srinivas and Nakchampa into this country. And he supplied all these businesses in San Francisco, like the head shop. There was a place called the head shop, which is, became the generic term for head shops. Um, and he's got great stories, and he knew amazing people, many people that we know. Um, great artist Stanley Mouse and Alan Kelly and he was very very tight also with Alan Watts for example mm -hmm. in fact it was an incense he imported for Alan Watts um, called Shoranko it's very very expensive Japanese incense uh, and out of respect he, he still imports Shoranko very rarely sells it but out of pure respect in fact he he owns a Tonka a beautiful Tonka that was willed to him by Alan Watts that's still in, in his place in, in Hawaii. So he had retired, you know, sold his business to a wonderful family who, you know, um, had us over for dinner and they're just great. And then he retired to Hawaii and he just, you know, retiring. He was not a man of leisure really, so he kept busy. Uh, so this was one of the first packaged in the Excelsior line as Mandala. Its original name was Sanduri Delight. Um, and sometimes you'll see it as Sendori Delight, but out of respect for David, I, I still call it Mandala. Uh, let me give you the number on that. That's number 76. Mm -hmm. That's the spirit. <laughs> and it also is a saffron-based incense. And you can smell, again, a similarity between it and others. It's lightly sweet, uh, more dry than sweet, lightly sweet, kind of a sandalwood. That, again, that damp, cool quality. That's a greenish note to it, um, slightly earthy. This is one of the very first incense we even carried. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Okay, I'm getting the getting the hook. <laughs> oh no, it's so much more I wanted to do. Can I just show, I'm just going to show one last thing. I want to show one last our thing. Our next incense. Uh, last, our next no, no. incense. Let me show one last thing. Is are we fighting again? No. I just want everybody to know this. I will put it in the camera there. Okay, this is the Chandan dupe from Mysore Sugandhi dupe factory. This is an item that for a long time, at least a year, I wasn't able to get. And it was a real nightmare, and I thought I was in for more heartbreak. But I was able to secure a few dozen of these. And as soon as I secured a few dozen of these, I started getting busy trying to secure a few more dozen of these. These is are, this on your list? Yes, this is number 68, I believe, or 69, 67, 68. I believe it's 68. Go on our website. Okay. Right. Anyway, my source are going to be Chandan Duke. They're like these little logs of sandalwood. They're one of the very first incenses I ever used. Um, they're absolutely beautiful. If you're a sandalwood fan, seriously, you need this. Um, okay. Get it while you can. I can't guarantee I'll be able to get it again. If people are looking for it, it's don't look for Shandan Duke. Look for Mysore. Mysore, Sugandhi, Shandan yeah, Duke. because it's under the M's, Mysore. Um, absolutely beautiful. Uh, they're like little logs. You'll love it. If you want a sample, what the heck? Send us two stamps with your return address. Send you a sample of these bad boys. I don't mind. We'll do that, I guess. Um, they're kind of lumpy. Will they send okay as a sample? We'll make it. Yeah, we'll make it. We'll make it work. Hit him with a hammer. Yeah, whatever. I don't know. But seriously, gorgeous. If you're a sandalwood person, this is a necessity. Yeah. If you haven't used them before, I'd probably burn more of them than I actually sell, which is okay. I don't mind. <laughs> um, please do yourself a favor. It's not a favor for me. It's a favor for you. If you want a sample, no worries. Cost you a stamp. So two stamps. Two. St well, stamp to send the letter and. Oh, they send us two stamps. Yeah. Well, I mean, send us two stamps. <laughs> Not just a stamp on the envelope. <laughs> two more stamps. So it's going to cost you three stamps. <laughs> Goodness, at that point, you may as well just order a pack of. Like, 
Uh, oh, no, I, 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 thank you. Oh, wonderful. I'm thank getting you. mad if I don't finish. <laughs> thank you, thank you. So, next time, 21st. 21st. November. November. Yay.